Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're joining us for the first time, thanks for coming. Where have you been? There are lots of fully funded scholarships on this channel already. So check out the video we've shared and I'm sure you'll find something that will interest you. And if you're a returning subscriber, a returning viewer, thanks for the constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. Today we are in Australia in search of masters and PhD opportunities, as usual, at the University of Tasmania. So that's where we are today, the University of Tasmania. And first things first, usually in Australia, a number of prospective applicants are concerned that the, uh, most universities require you to apply through an agent. For this university, you have um, both options either to apply directly, you can see this button here, or apply through an agent. It's also written here, you can apply directly with us through our application portal, or you may be required or prefer to apply through an agent. So it is stated here, and I went further to actually open an application to see the process, whether or not I'll be directed to an agent. And this is what I found. So this is the login page, and I logged in. I logged in quickly with my email and everything and actually I was able to start my application. So this is a sample application I started and I chose agricultural food science for just for an example. So let me show you what I typed in. I typed in my home country, Nigeria, and I was still able to complete the form. To the best of my knowledge, I wasn't directed to an agent. So this is the form I was trying to complete earlier. So let's go to before you start your application and you see my basic details and um, the basic information about um, the, the application. What I'm trying to say is that so far I've not been directed to an agent. So try your luck, you might also have the same um, thing that you wouldn't have to go through an agent. So this is, these are my details. By the way, this is not my phone number. If you call the number, you're calling somebody else. I just get back that's there for, for an example. But I would like to show you that I chose Nigeria as a um, country of origin, country I'm located, and I was still allowed to put forward or to move forward with the application. So fingers crossed that you can do the same without them directing you to an agent. Because usually agents charge some amount of money, sometimes quite exorbitant. And this might um, be a problem for those who do not have money to pay. So that is it with agent and applying directly to this university. So let's go to the scholarships, you know, money issues and funding. So there are fortunately lots of scholarships here for postgraduates, especially for um, PhD and masters by research. So this is the ROTP scholarship by the Australian government. And you can see here that you get a stipend of 31,500 per annum. And um, it's also for, as I said, um, masters and a PhD is a research degree, so it's a research masters usually. Usually in Australia, there's a difference between a research masters and a taught masters. For a research masters, you're coming to do a project, coming to do a research, and will be assessed based on that research. For a taught masters, you're actually going to classroom, taking classes and things like that. For a research masters, you might also take classes, but your major assessment is based on the research you do. Of course, PhD by itself is by research, so there's no point um, elaborating on that. So it says here that there's going to be, um, what do they call it, the stipend of 31500 That's true. And it says that unless a tuition scholarship has been awarded, international students will be charged tuition fees. So this might be a problem for a number of international students saying, oh, so do you mean I'll be paying my fees from my stipend? But after paying my fees, how much will remain, you know, and things like that. Um, not exactly the case. I'll show you how to get both a tuition waiver, a tuition scholarship, and then the stipend as well. So just stay with me and stick with me. You wouldn't have to pay anything, everything covered. As a matter of fact, there's even relocation grant. It means you're going to get your tuition paid. You're going to get a stipend. You're even going to get a relocation grant. So things that will cover like your your flight ticket, at least partly, if not everything, if that makes sense. So I know it says here that um, 
the scholarship doesn't cover um, tuition cost for international students or things like that. But you can get other things. You can get other um, scholarships or other funding from projects that will help you cover that cost. So do not worry. Um, you There are alternatives. So apart from the ROTP scholarship, you also have this one here, the Tasmania Graduate Research Scholarship. Quite similar as well. Similar in value, similar in content. Application mode is also similar. You also get your relocation grant of 2000 Australian dollars. So there are other, some other scholarships here for some other applicants, depending on the country of origin. But the ROTP and the Tasmanian Graduate Scholarship are the major ones. So how do you apply for them? So just scroll down a little. You see the dates, the scholarship round dates. Um, the dates we'll be looking forward to now is the 28th of, where is it? Not the 28th, sorry. The closing date is on the 25th of September. And then the outcome will be announced on the 28th on the 28th of November. So on the 25th is the deadline. And there was a deadline on the 1st of July. That's already passed. Now we're looking or working towards the deadline in September, towards the end of September. And this deadline is for all disciplines, both for international and domestic applicants. So start working towards the deadline. This video will be out in July, towards the end of July. It means you have just the whole of August and maybe a bit of September to also prepare. So you, you need to start as soon as possible. So how do you apply? How do you apply? So let's scroll down a little. Um, can scroll down a little and see the mode of application. So how do you apply? The number of tabs here you can click on. So future students, let's see, apply now. Or this one as well you can also click on this link and see where it takes us to actually they take us to the same page so we started from here clicked any of these two links and then we'll start on this page and this will tell you step by step how to apply for a research degree so either a research masters or a phd so before you start make sure you fulfill the applications requirement the course requirements and the English language proficiency. We'll be talking about that shortly. I think we should open that tab. We should open a tab for this. I'll be coming to that. Scholarship tuition fees. We looked at the available scholarships already. And we'll look at some more when it comes to available projects. So if you're applying for a scholarship at this university, it has to be attached to a project. So you look at the available projects and see the one that closely aligned with your interest. You're going to select one project that aligns with your interest and then apply for it. We'll be looking at the projects as well. So just stay with me. So projects and um, you need to apply for the projects with a supervisor. Most of these projects, all of them are done with a supervisor. The name of the supervisor will be written close to the project. So do not worry. You have a supervisor there already. All you just need to do is to contact the supervisor in charge. So we'll get there. So find a project, you see, find a project, just one. Check for the opening dates, the closing dates. Check for the description of the project. Make sure you have the necessary experience, the background. Uh, you need a supervisor. I need to attach a supervisor's form. So the supervisor has to agree to supervise your project. And then you attach this form, this agreement form to your application. And this is mandatory, as you can see. Then you and the supervisor will develop a very short research proposal of two pages long. And these are the major bullet points you need to address in the proposal. Then, of course, you submit the application, await your response, and hopefully you'll be successful. So let's look at the quickly the projects, the available projects. So these are the available projects for different disciplines. You can see some for agriculture some for architecture biology you can see creative um, arts and media so for both practical sciences social sciences health humanities law you have projects for almost all disciplines here so what you do you narrow it down to your discipline and then see the applications requirements 
So for instance, there is this one here, um, a tool to manage the food recall risk. So this is the name of the professor closing on the 25th and there's a scholarship there. So you can click on this quickly and see what it entails. So it gives you details about the scholarship. Let this load quickly. Okay. So it gives details about the scholarship, the closing date, and it said this is for a PhD. So use the future function if you're interested in a master's. This one is for a PhD, but for domestic and international students. Details about the project, details about the supervisor. This is where you get info about the supervisor. And then you're advised to contact the supervisor, send him or her an email and to demonstrate your background, demonstrate your intention. You can see the funding we talked about here, the 31,500, and now you also have the 2,000 for relocation. Then you have the tuition offset. Here it says for domestic only, that's important. So it's also said here that if successful international applicants will receive University of Tasmanian fee offset for up to four years. So why this this one here, the third bullet point said, just for domestic students only. Just below it also says, there is something for you, but if you're an, an international student, you also get your fees waived. And of course, you also receive the stipend and the relocation grant. So you just, similar benefits as the domestic students, essentially. Of course, check for the key dates, key mode of operation, how to contact the supervisor is all written here. References, CV, and everything is already there. So just follow the instructions and you will be fine. Of course, check for your own course. We just checked for the agriculture department and one of the projects here. You can always use the filter function to select the degree, either a PhD or a master's by research, citizenship, whether domestic or international, scholarship, um, available or guaranteed, you can use both of them actually, or leave it blank. Um, full time usually for international students. And then you get a variety of um, positions open for you. And um, one other thing I think you should consider is whether you can pitch your own project to the supervisor. That is something I think you can speak to the university about um, directly and see if it's going to work. Um, so this is for masters by research, of course, try for a PhD. I think generally there are more opportunities for a PhD, as you can see here. So having said that, remember we talked about the um, requirements, the applications requirements, and then we talked about the, what do they call them? The um, English language requirements. So let me look for that page and see I think it was this tab that we opened. So this is the tab we opened the other time. So for a PhD, the application requirements are stated here. You need a bachelor's and often a master's as well, the research component. And for a master's by research, you need a bachelor's degree. And if possible, if you have a course-based master's or a taught master's. Then we have a little bit of a problem here when it comes to the English language requirement. But there's for every problem, there's a solution, of course. So it says um, you need to have one of these tests, the notorious IELTS or TOEFL or PTE or the rest of them. Or you get a waiver if you are from these countries, very narrow, just six of them. Or if you studied at these countries, also very brief. Or completed a two year application or completed within two years of your application date the master's degree um, from a recognized university. So you could always use this one that you've completed uh, a degree where English, in a recognized university, of course, where English language is the medium of instruction. So you could tell them that you do not need to write the IELTS, do not need to write the TOEFL that English was the language of your study throughout and ask for a waiver. Hopefully this would work and save you the stress and the money needed to apply for this um, English language test. So I hope this was useful, guys. The 
master's and PhD scholarships at the University of Tasmania. As I said, I attempted to apply directly and so far so good, my application is moving forward. <laughs> you know, I've not been told to contact as, um, an agent yet. So fingers crossed, you wouldn't need to contact an agent. And that's it, guys. I hope this was useful. And this is a wonderful opportunity to study for free in Australia with your stipend, with your tuition paid and a relocation grant of 2000 Australian dollars. As usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. There are several other scholarships on this channel from different countries around the world. If you've not subscribed, make sure you do so because there are many more scholarships coming your way. And I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now.